about 15 billion years ago, I wasn't there. Maybe a couple of you were, but I was not there. God decided, I'm going to make a universe. I'm going to do some things about uh, creating. And so he brought this wonderful universe into existence <clears throat> and set its laws there, set it's the way it's going to operate, etc. And about 155, 60,000 years ago, our genetic ancestors showed up. And about <clears throat> 65,000 years ago, Anybody there for this? Okay, I don't think so. <clears throat> Human beings, as we know them, came into this creation. God took those uh, parts of creation <clears throat> that had been set up for that and gave them a soul. And he said, here, here is the beginning of the human race. We are embodied souls or ensouled bodies. We can say it either way. And about 2,000 years ago, <clears throat> well, about 3,000 years ago, the prophet Ezekiel comes up. And uh, <clears throat> the leaders had really messed it up. So he said, well, I myself will be the shepherd. I will be the shepherd. And, of course, he's pointing towards Christ. Finally, he shows up. And we hear this gospel today about the, as we celebrate this <clears throat> wonderful day of Christ the King, the last Sunday of the liturgical year. And the Father gives Jesus this throne from which he will judge and he says, you know, there are things that we have to do if we really want to be in this kingdom. But Monsignor, no, that's just the way it is. That's the way God set it up. In fact, when I was conceived, and those many, many years ago, almost 80-some years ago when I was conceived, and those two little those two little cells, the sperm and the egg, they came together. And God saw that connection. And he made a soul for me. Just for me. Didn't just reach in a box and, okay, throw out a, a, a soul like that. And that's true for every one of you. God made a soul for you, just for you. Whether you're male or female, he made it for you. And from that very moment, God's laws were, were working. And as we grew, and, and bones and, and flesh, and, and all of this parts of our body came into existence. And they are meant to work a certain way. Well, yes, Monsignor, that's, that's, that's fine. I really don't have any problem with that. But it's, it's part of God's law. It's part of God's way of doing things. And as we grew and came into adulthood, God is asking you and me, okay, so how are we supposed to live? And we heard this in the, in the gospel today. <clears throat> to feed the hungry, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We've heard those things many times. And that's one of the things we are supposed to do. And <clears throat> in this list of behaviors, <clears throat> he didn't say, well, those of you who murdered people, those of you who were adulterers, those of you who were uh, thieves, you're going to go to hell. He didn't, he, he, did, he said, you didn't do some things. You didn't care for the poor. You didn't visit the sick. You know, the corporal works of mercy. 
and said, you cannot come in because you did not do those things. See, that's, that's part of the law. Part, part of the, the, the king of the universe is to make those judgments. And, you know, he's, he's got a pretty good memory, so he, he, can, he knows what we've done. And he knows what we will do. But he's asking you and me to make him the king of our lives. That everything we do, every word we speak, every thought we have, every action we put into history, should be done to honor God, to honor Christ the King. Now, we Americans, we don't particularly like that because we like to be independent. We like to sing the devil's song, which is, I did it my way. Now, that's how you got to say it. No, no. You got to sing it. You just can't. Yeah, I did it my way. Because that's what Satan did. Satan did it his way. When we're called to do it his way, God's way, in how we think and how we act, how we use our talents, and we're, we're, <clears throat> we're called to put that into action. Because one day, one day, you and I are going to stand before the judgment uh, chair of Jesus. We're not going to live forever. Thank goodness. I do not want to live forever. Can you imagine how bad that would be? You'd have to be married to the same person for 500 years. <laughs> oh, glory be to God. That that's what would happen. And all sorts of other things. Taxes forever. This world was not meant. The world was not meant for that. This is a temporary place. I don't like. The, I don't know a good analogy. It's kind of like a training camp. <clears throat> this is this is where you, you know, you learn how to do these things. And God wants us to be successful. And He'll give us all the mercy. He'll forgive our sins. He'll do all of those things. But he cannot, he cannot and will not make it happen. You stand before the throne of God. Say, well, you know, God, I didn't really think that commandment was that important. You know what Jesus is going to say? Really? Really? Oh, <laughs> let me check the book here. We know better. We know better. And so we have this last Sunday, and the, the last couple of weeks of the liturgical year, <clears throat> our readings are about the end of the world, the final judgment, <laughs> because it's going to happen. And so we, we take time to focus on that, that we will be judged. And... If we follow the king, not the kind of king we're going to have on earth. Earthly kings, you know, they mess up. They mess up. And we know that. But Jesus does not. He doesn't mess up. From that first moment of our conception, God knew exactly what he was doing. And to whom he is doing it. So that you and I can become the men and women who are in his image and likeness. And at that moment, at that moment of conception, I was in the likeness of God. And so were you. And <clears throat> at that very second, you were the image of God, a human being. And so we have that law. Now, there is natural law. You know, if you drop something, it's going to fall and things, all sorts of things like that. <clears throat> there are animals who uh, are governed really by, by instinct. You know, after all the gazillions of years that 
that, that the dogs and cats have been in the world, the only language they know is woof, woof. That's all they know. They've never learned to write or steal or anything like that. They, they, they're, they're governed by instinct. And in some ways, we are too. We have instincts. Somebody throws something on, uh, at us, we're going to automatically jump, you know, and things like that to try to get out of the way. That's true. But what we can do, and no other creature except for the angels, can say no to God. And that's what Jesus is teaching us in this gospel. Don't say no to me. But we didn't see you. He says, you should have. You should have seen. You should have taken those people into consideration. You should have reached out to them. That's what he's telling us in the gospel. And the king will do exactly what he said he would do. For those who paid attention, he will say, come into the fullness. To those who ignored, we will lose. Lose for all eternity. So today, <clears throat> think about where is God not your king? Is it your checkbook? Is that where he's not the king? What you think you want to do with your life? You say, well, he's not the king there for me. I, I want to do what I want to do. Remember who said that first? All kinds of things. So let's take this last week of the year. Uh, maybe come to Mass uh, during the week, <clears throat> either at our, our, par our parish, our chapel, maybe downtown. There's church Masses all over the city at different times. Make an extra visit to the, to the Eucharist with some adoration, some uh, time with Jesus, and say, Jesus, I want you to be my king. I, I really want to be your servant. But I want to be on the right hand when that, <clears throat> when that judgment comes, for it will come. So we, we celebrate Christ the King, a wonderful King, a just King, a merciful King, who did everything possible to show us the way, even to dying. Even to dying when he was totally innocent. And nobody in this church is totally innocent. Not myself, not any of you, but still he says, I want you with me for all eternity. That's the kind of king that we should, uh, we should worship, not the one in the mirror. <laughs>